morning. Great to see you all again. So, back in the Lake District, and what is the hottest day of the year here in England? We are having an absolute scorcher. It is around about 30 degrees C. And we're climbing up there to a place called Angle Tarn. And then there's another tarn just further on called Stylehead Tarn, which we're gonna try and get to. But I'm gonna take it easy. We've got lots of water and take our time because at the moment it's 2 p.m. and probably the hottest part of the day. Oh, it's just fantastic though. And it's nice. I wanna jump in here, to be honest, already I'm so hot. Okay, let's go. That's hard in the sun. We found an oasis, a tree. Phew. Oh. That was hard. That was so hard. I want to be a sheep, I know that much. How they cope with their coats, I will never know. I'm at the top, well, I'm not at the top, but I'm at the tarn. A swim might be in order. way to cool off when you've done a walk. Forget the photography, just go swimming. So in this video I thought it'd be really useful to talk a little bit about how you can create scale and try and show this vast landscape using scale in, in, your, in your shots. So one of the ways to do it is use people like me. So by including me on this ridge here, a bit tired, just walked all the way over. Oh, one sec. So by using me on this ridge, you can see straight away that I start to give some depth to the image. I start to, you start to be able to see how big this area is and how far this, this, this is away in the image compared to the sort of vast mountains in the distance there. So it starts to give the idea of scale in the scene. So what I find is the smaller that you can have a person in the image when it's vast like this, the better and the more vast the whole environment looks. So I'm gonna try and show that and find some locations where I can take a photo with, with me in them. And hopefully that'll give you an idea of just how majestic this place is. Because I just don't think even with my drone footage I can get across just how beautiful it is here. But before that, I've got chili con carne today. So looking forward to that, wow really doesn't get any better than this. Mm. Not sure if I made the right decision, but we'll see. Looks good. Cold, needs heating up more. <laughs> okay, so we managed to get camp set up. I'm on a little bit of a precipice here, but um, and there's quite a lot of rocks under me, but I think it's gonna be fine. I think I'll have a reasonable night's sleep. And um, yeah, I mean, what can be better than this? And so far there's no midges, so all good. So whilst I'm waiting for the sun just to go down a little bit more, Actually, tonight I'm probably not gonna take a lot of photos. I feel like it's a sunrise location rather than a sunset location. I don't think there's a huge amount I can take at sunset. If there were some clouds, then maybe, but sometimes it's best just to forget the photography and just enjoy the views. So that's what I'm going to do. But I wanted to say now, just before I go and do that, is just thanks really to everybody that commented on my last video about becoming um, a professional photographer for a year. 
I was just blown away by all the comments that I got. It really motivates me to, to get those. Um, you know, I probably say a lot about how I get out and do all these things, but sometimes it's really difficult. Sometimes I, I really have to motivate myself to do a video. This week has been quite a struggle to think what I'm going to do. I, I have a list of things I'm going to do in my videos every week, but I, I, I just didn't feel like any of them would work this week. So I thought if I come camping, maybe I'll just be a little bit inspired. And I think I have been. I think, you know, sh sh shooting around here, it's difficult not to be. And I'm really hopeful my, my, my camp, my tent looks out over the sunrise. So in probably about six or seven hours, I, 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 I'm going to find that that's just absolutely amazing. But thanks so much to everybody. I really do appreciate everybody's comments. So thanks for, thanks for commenting. And um, it really encourages me to keep doing this. Um, and yeah, I'll stop talking now and just go and enjoy the view. That's going to be my view when I wake up in the morning. If anybody's ever thought twice about camping, then just go and do it. You know, get yourself a cheap tent or or, or just go and sleep un under the stars. I can't explain it, but there's just nothing better than just being out here, there being nobody around, and you get that time to just think and enjoy the evening think not knowing that you're not going to go back somewhere else and then i get the joy of just being able to get up and look at the sunrise in the morning there is just nothing better nothing in the world okay i'm off to bed now Time to get on. <laughs> Look outside. Morning, everybody. Oh. What a morning. Oh, so, it's 4 a.m. and it's about 50 minutes before sunrise. And there's not a breath of wind, it's absolutely gorgeous. Can't wait to take shots today. So it's still fairly early and the sun is going to rise over there and hopefully cast some nice light on these rocks here. So I'm just try trying to plan a composition, but what's really difficult is I have a quite a flat horizon. So there's no real big mountains in this direction that that can sort of um, provide a, a cut through the, the sky really. And with blue sky, I then have this real definite um, line between the, the, the mountains and the, and the blue sky, which sort of doesn't make for a, a great image. So what I'm trying to do is minimize the amount of sky and maximize the amount of foreground. I've got this leading line of this um, river going down the valley, which looks absolutely fantastic. But it's a question of just trying a few things out, just looking around. I, I also want to, you know, say, talk, talk a little bit more about including people to, to create a bit of scale in, in the image as well. So further down these rocks, I'm probably going to stand down there and, and, and include myself in the photo. And yeah, it's just a question of waiting now for the light to come up. It is really, really beautiful up here. There's not a breath of wind. It's so nice. Surrounded by colors, it's such a sight Watching all the lovers fall into the night All the moons in a heartbeat We're calling back where it all began 
them down a little bit so I can have this nice diagonal here and then still got the leading line of the river and what I'm going to do is right up there in the top left I'm going to go and stand there and what that will do is two things it'll create a sense of scale to the location but it will also mean that uh, that, that there's something for the eye to be taken to across this horizon, this straight horizon in the distance and I think that'll just add a little bit more drama to the image. So I'm going to set my camera up on interval timer every 10 seconds, walk over there, strike a few poses and see how it goes. Okay I found some really interesting rocks here. So. What I like about them is that there's a set of three. There's one on the on the bottom just down here. There's one on the left here. And there's another one just in the mid round here. And then they also reflect the angles of the distant mountains as well. So what I'm trying to do is create patterns in the foreground that are, are repeated in the in the distant mountains as well. Again, there's not any interest in the sky, which is a shame. So I'm I'm almost making that go white. What what I want to try and do is is sort of accentuate the sort of distantness of these mountains and I'm, I'm, I'm almost probably going to burn them out. Um, I think it'll work, we'll see in a minute. <laughs> and so I'm, I'm really exposing correctly for the rocks and not worrying too much about the distant mountains. So what I'm trying to do now is use the light in, in, in as clever a way as I can really. So I'm trying to use the contrast between the light rocks here and the dark rocks um, in the background that are in the shadow. But then I've also got the river down there that is just catching some of the light. So it creates this really nice sort of line through the valley which is again in shadow. We've got the light on the mountains over there and then just down here you can probably see if I move my camera around here. You can see that I'm just picking up the top of the the grasses there and that just looks really nice so I'm trying to sort of compose something with all those elements in and see what I can get again I'm just trying things out this is really experimental so yeah, sometimes it's just good fun to, to play and, and try different things <laughs> So another position that you can put people in to create scale in your images is slap bang in the middle. But what you want to try and do is create contrast between that person and the background. So here it's perfect. I'm in the sun and the background's in the shade and it's a long way away. So it creates a really dramatic look. And then I've got some really interesting elements in the scene as well. I've got the rocks which create this foreground interest and lead you into me. And then I've got the river in the background that leads you through into the distant mountains. So hopefully this is gonna create a really great shot that creates scale in this environment, which is often so difficult to do when you're in the hills. Okay, I'm gonna do this. It's nearly 6 a.m. now, I've not had my breakfast. I'm gonna go and get my breakfast and yeah, I'm going to have a hot chocolate as well. I imagine you right here with me. Okay, we're off down now, so if you like this video then give it a thumbs up and if you're not subscribed then please subscribe and if you've not clicked the bell icon if you want to get notifications of any new videos or anything else that I'm publishing then make sure you click that and I'd love to hear your comments as well in the comments below okay until next Sunday bye <laughs>